Hey, Gathering family, so we are less than 18 days away from the start of Encounter 24. Y'all, I cannot wait. Excitement is growing. I just got a message today about our Sunday night service. Um, we, we might have a good number of people showing up from out of town. There's a lot of excitement growing around what God's going to do at this year's Encounter. I just want to remind you, our theme, y'all, is wildfire and we are believing God to do something in the power of the Holy Spirit like we have not seen in this area in a long time. So I want to pre uh, just read to you a couple excerpts from this chapter in his fire seeds Bible. It's, it's on the power of fervent prayer and in just a few hours we'll be gathering to pray. We gather every Wednesday night um, and as we get closer to encounter we're starting to pray specifically for the speakers that are coming, for the um, the people that are going to attend, for our city, that there would be, you know, it's one thing to have people speak and deliver truth. It's another thing to have people receptive to re to hear it and receive it and act on it. So that's what we're praying. Listen to this quote from um, a man named J. Edwin Orr. He said this: Whenever God is ready to do something new with His people, He always sets them to praying. We are addicted to the short term and with every advance in technology and convenience and every new button added to our remotes, that habit intensifies. We pray a while. When no obvious answers are forthcoming, we become distracted or discouraged and quit. But lasting revival, listen to this, is the fruit of persistent prayer, weeks, months, sometimes years of petitioning God for a spiritual brush fire to break out on our campuses, cities, converting the lost, quickening believers, and drawing the focus of the entire area to Jesus Christ. So w there's a, a, a story in here that Charles Finney, who was a, a great preacher, used to talk up used to share talking about what what one person's prayer can accomplish so let me just read that story to you here in a certain town there had been no revival for many years the church was nearly extinct the youth were all unconverted and desolation reigned unbroken there lived in a retired part of the town an aged man of so stammering a tongue that it was painful to hear him speak on one Friday, as he was at work in his shop alone, his mind became greatly exercised about the state of the church and of the unrepentant. His agony became so great that he was induced to lay by his work, lock the shop door, and spend the afternoon in prayer. He prevailed and on the Sabbath called on the minister and desired him to appoint a conference meeting. After some hesitation, the minister consented observing however that he feared that very few would attend when evening came more assembled than could be accommodated in that house all were silent for a time until one sinner broke out in tears and said if anyone could pray kindly would they pray for him another followed and another and so on until it was found that persons from every quarter of that town were under deep conviction and what was remarkable was that they dated, they all dated their conviction at the hour that the old man was praying in his shop. A powerful revival followed. Thus this old stammering man prevailed and as a prince had power with God. Clearly, y'all, it doesn't take a lot of um, educated people, college, seminary trained preachers to call on us and pray for revival it just takes like people like me people like you who are just hungry just to see god move just to cry out and say god if you did it then do it now um let me just close this with a couple um a couple one more quote let me find it be patient with me prepare yourself y'all the author of this book says let me close with the following exhortation from one of history's greatest students of revival leonard ravenhill it has pricked my prayer life for years and i hope it will stimulate yours as well and again this is leonard ravenhill calling the church back to prayer 
And the reason we need to be praying is because if we want to see revival, somebody's got to pray for that revival. This is what Leonard Ravenhill said. The church has many organizers, but few agonizers. Many who pay, but few who pray. Many resters, but few wrestlers. Many who are enterprising, but few who are interceding. People who are not praying are playing. Two prerequisites of dynamic Christian living are vision and passion. Both of these are generated by prayer. The ministry of preaching is open to a few. The ministry of praying, of praying is open to every child of God. Tithes may build the church, but tears will give it life. That is the difference between the modern church and the early church. Our emphasis is on paying. Theirs was on praying. When we have paid, the place is taken. But when they had prayed, the place was shaken. In the matter of effective praying, never have so many left so much to so few. Brothers, let us pray. Can I challenge you? to pray. Don't leave this praying for revival. Something so precious, so powerful, so needed. Don't leave something that important to so few people. Come, join us tonight. Begin now. Again, like I said in the last video, pray 20 minutes a day. Ask God for revival 20 minutes a day. Make it a matter of prayer no matter how long it takes, no matter how little you see an answer. S stay at it. Don't quit. Be faithful in prayer. Let's, let's persist in fervent, passionate prayer because when we ask God for a deliverer, He will send the deliverer. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit like we never have before. God, I'm asking that you would unite our hearts in prayer, that you would give us a passion to seek you, like we would be like the prophet who prayed and prayed and prayed and kept telling his assistant, go see if there's a cloud, go look for rain. And he prayed until he saw a cloud the size of a man's fist. God, give us that determination, I pray. And start tonight, start at the gathering, start in me. And don't let us stop until we see our city transformed.